<laughs> it's, a, it's an honor to be here. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, thank you for coming to my presentation today. Uh, my name is Robert Lunty. Um, I am, uh, let's see, we're going to go forward. There we are. So um, I've done two things that sort of helped me to get here to help you guys today a little bit. Um, before I get too far ahead of my skis, um, my presentation is going to be basically do it yourself on camera. Do it yourself on camera without looking like an amateur. All right. So um, in another life, I'm a voice coach, best-selling book, nine online courses in five languages. That's me singing some heavy metal. And then um, I wanted to actually make some money. So I launched uh, an agency and started hanging out with guys like Mike back there. And what we do at Course Creek is, is uh, we help coaches, authors, companies, anybody with a great idea monetize their expertise into asynchronous courses, live master classes, and live cohorts. So I manage a team of implementation managers and instructional designers. Um, oftentimes, the, I'm here at podcasts because guests of podcast shows tend to be my customers as well. It's sort of the same crowd. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of networking and taking advantage of this opportunity to show you guys how to do this. So I spent gobs and gobs of hours in front of a camera making the courses, doing a YouTube channel and that whole thing. And then as a leader of Course Creek, I'm the on-camera coach. So we get, a, we get a coach that comes in, an author, somebody that wants to make an online course. They got a big heart, they got a lot of energy and a lot of potential and always a really super brilliant idea. And we get to phase, our phase two in the customer journey where they have to do talking head content. They have to get in front of the camera and line it up. And I've been doing it for years, but I've just found that it's just absolutely amazing how people will mess that up. And so it's just, it's amazing to me how people can mess up something that seems so simple. And I'm going to show you my presentation here. This is the most simplest presentation that you guys are going to get all week long. And, but it's got some cool tips on it. And just these few things will make your on-camera content for social media or an online course or something like that look good. Just almost professional, all right? And not look totally amateur. All right. So um, agenda, I'm gonna go over do-it-yourself video gear. I think you guys just, some of you just heard, saw a lot of that. I have a version on that as, my, as well. I'm gonna cover framing, how we frame ourselves on the camera. I'm gonna cover backgrounds and some nice ideas and some simple things that your mother always told you about attire, okay? All right, do-it-yourself video gear. Um, so I have, we have, we work with, with our clients. I send them to an Amazon.com store that I've created that has some really simple, for about 600 bucks, recommendations on do-it-yourself gear. All right, now I will tell you, I have made courses that are big productions on just webcams, all right? I believe that a Brio webcam can give you a beautiful shot, actually. You don't, I'm not convinced that in most situations you need a DSLR and something super fancy. Some situations you do and you want that, but just doing, a, doing some social media content or, or doing sort of a lecture, con lecture piece of content for a course, not really necessary. So this is the recommended gear that we have that I recommend for my clients. Again, this is people on a budget, not expensive stuff. You got the Brio, you have a wireless USB lavalier, I absolutely love for 50 bucks. Some cheap lighting options and some adapters. Um, down here at the bottom, this might sound a bit, I hope this doesn't sound vain, but for some folks, it's nice to be able to get a little bit of color in your face. So, so I recommend that. Hey, so you look good on camera. Um, it lasts forever. So if anybody's interested in, for, in some recommendations on do-it-yourself gear that is inexpensive, I got it all set up. Now here's the other point about this, because I'd mentioned earlier here about workflow. Yeah, so this do-it-yourself gear isn't only affordable, 
but when you set it up properly, it creates, it enables you to create a content creation workflow that's super fast. Back in the day when I used to do, when I started doing filming for courses, I would bring in a videographer and spend an arm and a leg and the batteries would die and we would work our asses off all day long and we would get eight compositions done after an eight hour day. And it's just, it's just a burden, it's tiring. And one day we worked together and we put together this, this stuff here. Enabling, basically what this can do is it enables you to plug in your stuff on your desktop or your laptop, fire up Zoom, do an offline recording with Zoom. So you're gonna record with Zoom, send the file to the desktop, okay? And, get, and use it as software to develop a file. And when you have it all, when you have this gear, it enables you to plug it all in so that, you, so that you can essentially go, hit record, step back, do my composition, hit stop, save it to the external hard drive, line it up, look at my script, hit record, step back, do another one, stop, save the file to the external hard drive, look at my storyboard, Lesson number three, okay, I remember what I'm supposed to talk about. Hit record, step back, and go. This gear here, the simple cheap stuff, enables you to do a workflow that will turn an eight hour, comp an eight composition day into an 18, 20 composition a day. It radically changed my, my productivity, okay? Do you have a link to that? What's that? Do you have a link to your little shop? I do, um, and I can. Uh, I do have a link to it. I would have to have your email address, and I'll send it to you. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure: it's a, it's an Amazon.com thing. I get like six dollars or something. It's enough to pay for my, for my, uh, <laughs> for my latte habit. All right. But no, I love this tech because this tech stack because it gives me that workflow. All right. Uh, we're going in the wrong direction. Okay. So let's talk about on camera. First of all, let's talk about framing. Does uh, anybody not know what framing means? Take a guess. Someone framing? That's right, this old thing. Right, get in the frame, all right? So what we don't want to do is that. The first thing that my clients do at Course Creek when they give me, hey, Robert, I'm really excited. I got, I got in front of the camera today and go take a look at it and give me some feedback and every single time without failure every single time. It's all head and I'm looking at the ceiling fan. Okay, so that's actually, I've seen much worse than that. So that is a no, that's a no, no. It, this is super simple. Get lined up. Don't just be a head. And don't have a whole bunch of space above your head in the frame, all right? The opposite of this would be God dang it. This guy, don't do that. I see that sometimes. Hey, Robert, I really got it great, you know? And I got somebody, I think I got it. I think I got it, and I can't see their eyes. All right? So what you want to do is something more like that. And the top of this screen, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in front of my white wall back in my studio, but the top of this screen is like just right about underneath the Y and the S. Okay? So... At the top, pay, it's, it's simple. Just pay attention to the details, okay? At the top of your head, have about four to six inches. Not too much, it looks amateurish. You go too much, it looks amateurish. You go too short, and it's, and it's gonna be amateurish because if you're on your feet, or you're sort of moving a little bit, you're gonna end up cutting off your head in the screen, and it just looks shitty, all right? So, six inches up on top. Any questions about framing? Yeah. Dead center, you don't do rule of thirds. Uh, say again? Yeah, dead center, you don't do rule of thirds. Uh, roll of rule, rule, rule of thirds. Not, so you do dead center, not rule of thirds. Oh, 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 no. Um, I, I might put myself in a third if the background merits it, which we're going to get into. We're going to get into background. So these particular shots are in the center because that's sort of what I wanted the composition to look like. Yeah, but I think that where we're going with backgrounds, it'll help you a little bit on that. And by the way, I have a, 
an online video course that I created with all of this as well. So after the after the presentation, if anybody would like to get access to the video files where I'm on video explaining this and teaching it on camera, I'd be more than happy to uh, give that to you. Give you. All right, so this is another yes. Actually, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, don't, I actually don't totally like it because it's a little low down here. Um, this is another thing that um, it says yes, but it, it the real video is a yes, but I had I I, I cut off the um, the play line so it, it made it sort of thing. It actually went a little bit lower. Here's something to, to note in framing. Make sure that if you're going to gesticulate, people can see your arms. Okay, on camera. If you teach, if you if you speak with your hands, I, I speak with my hands quite a bit. All right, and to actually not do that, where where, where the bottom of the screen is right here, and you're just kind of only seeing hands pop up on them, amateurish. All right, so be mindful of your of your gesticulation, okay? So that actually should be a no. <laughs> All right, background options, okay? Any questions on framing? Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Okay, background options. Neutral backgrounds and corners create depth. That's a really spooky picture, actually, isn't it? <laughs> My God. So... <laughs> In your studio, you want to have a couple different background options. If you go into a professional studio shoot place, they have that. They have the casual space and then the cyclorama space and, and a couple different corners that, that you can, you know, different environments you can, they can drop you into. Do the same thing in your own space at home or in your studio. Go back and take a look around and you, essentially you have four corners. And what I would recommend is, first and foremost, make one corner a neutral color. White, okay? A white neutral corner, just like I have here. Now, in my studio, um, to get white, what I did is I went out to Amazon.com and I, and I purchased sound baffling with this cool Star Trek texture design on it. And I stuck them to the walls in the corner and ended up getting a really sort of cool white neutral background with some texture. You may not like it or not, but I think it's sort of cool. I get a lot of compliments on it, all right? And it also doubles down as a nice vocal booth when I want to sing and record, okay? Because it's been baffled. So you're getting white, you're getting sort of a cool, nice texture, and you're getting baffling to, to, uh, to chill out the ambient noise, okay? Now, um, the corner. It's, good, it's, a, it's a good idea to put yourself in a corner if you can, or at least have that be one of your options, because it gives you some depth. It gives you a little bit of depth. It's not so flat. Okay? And one day, it also looks a little creepy too, doesn't it? Um, so this is my argument for the texture. And then one day I was on Zoom in that space, and and I hit the blur button. You know, if you go to background effects on Zoom or other software and you hit blur, right? I thought, okay. well, what would happen if I hit blur in my, in my white corner that I love so much? And that's what you get. God, that's creepy. That is just, that is just full out creepy. I didn't know, I didn't think it was when I first started when I put that together, but it's weird. But anyways, so that's the same corner with blur effect on it. And what I love about that is now my white corner gives me a, a cool texture if I want one. It gives me depth if I want to get a little bit of depth in a, in a DIY environment. And if I hit the blur button, I kind of have simulated a cyclorama. My cyclorama is when you go into these nice video shoot studios. You've all seen them before where the corners are rounded out. Have you seen that? And it kind of it puts the subject in a, in a cloud of white. That's a cyclorama, okay? Well, I'm not going to be installing a cyclorama in my upstairs studio anytime soon, okay? But if I put blur into my white corner, I can kind of simulate one. It's like a poor man's cyclorama. I'm not making a judgment call about this versus the one with the texture. I'm just simply saying it's good to have options, right? Now, outside of your one, your primary space, which is a, a white neutral space, there's another space that you're going to need, which is what I call the prop space. 
So one corner in my studio is all white and clean. The other one is I have two prop spaces. This is the one for the CEO for Course Creek. This is Robert, the online course consultant, okay? And I will do meetings in front of this space. Notice it's another corner. Notice how it's giving me a little, a, a little bit of depth. And notice my framing is good. This is a good example of framing. My head, my, it's not too high, it's not too low, upper torso, people will be see gesticulation, and I do meetings with that background, very conscientiously, very consciously. If I get on a meeting with my friend Mike, I'm going to sit in front of that space because I want to look pro, it looks like, you know, I'm running a business, okay? So you've got the, you know, the certificates and stuff in the background and the, the white, whiteboard and everything, okay? Neutral corners have depth and it's a prop corner. Any questions about that? A prop corner should have like nice looking props, cool stuff, like not junk, right? Make it nice. Take the moment to step up and move something over, yes. How big of, of a room is that? Is that maybe 10 by 12? That's a great question. Um, it's probably from about the edge of that door over. So I have a, that's my white corner. That's, that's that corner. Yeah. Again, this is not rocket science. This is not talking about funnels. This isn't even videography gear. This is just common sense and showing you how to sort of pay attention to the space you already have available and what you can do with it. All right. Um, this is another prop corner. This is the other side of the room. So when I'm consulting as a voice coach, we have tour posters and we have preamps and gear in the background and stuff. All right. So e-learning consultant, voice coach, two different prop corners. The white corner will work for both businesses. Okay. Oh, this is cool. I like this. Here's another point that I wanted to make about backgrounds. Okay. Just take a moment to just stop and think about aesthetics and beauty. Look around you in your home, in your environment, and find a piece of art. Find something interesting that, that you know, I'm not saying it has to be a, you know, a, a museum painting, but, but everybody in their room has art, something around that, 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 that's meaningful. And absolutely true story, when I was making my video course that I was telling you guys about, I was walking around my house, and I walked right out of that studio room, and I was holding my camera, and I walked into the TV room, and in the, I'm sort of an, uh, an astronomy geek, and I walked into my TV room, and, I, and I, I'm like, oh shit, that's actually really super cool. I've got the sun on one side, I can get right in the middle in a white corner, again, I'm getting depth, sun on one side, and on this side, uh, a picture of the universe 300,000 years after the Big Bang. Now that's sort of geeky, and maybe you hate it, maybe you don't think it's cool. I think it's sort of pretty. And th the point isn't that that particular, particular pictures are pretty, that's not my point. My, my point is, is look around your environment and you'll find things that are beautiful and things that, are, that can be used as a nice background. Just have situational awareness, that's all I'm trying to say. Look for beautiful things, artwork, use. Then I went outside. Here I am looking really super tired. All right, this is near my backyard. This is Sun Valley, Idaho. All right, so we have a lot of beautiful scenic beauty. And that's not a perfect shot, but that's a hell of a lot prettier than that. Okay, so, and, the, and, it's, and I didn't move. So I had that shot. So imagine I was gonna go out and I was gonna do a video for social media. And I was gonna go outside. And I'm standing here, literally, I could, if I'm having situational awareness, I would, I would try to, you know, where's the mountain, where's the cloud, where's something that I can line myself up with to get at least halfway decent shot, as opposed to not paying attention to what I'm doing and getting just an old, ugly chain link fence. So the lesson here is have situational awareness about your environment. And that almost anywhere you go, you can find something that's beautiful, amazing, or at least better than the other option if you weren't paying attention. 
Okay? And it's really super simple, isn't it? But at the end of the day, if you look at a whole bunch of files, a whole bunch of videos on your YouTube channel or your course, it makes a huge difference in the whole thing coming off being amateurish or looking a lot better. All right, attire. So that is me singing, screaming in a YouTube video years ago as a voice coach. And I'm using it as an example of what not to do. That is, maybe as a voice coach, maybe as a young voice coach, it's sort of cool for a certain crowd. But that is a t-shirt with a weird, you know, choker necklace on it, and it's sort of gritty, and it's not professional, in my opinion. My mom would not be happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like okay, for a certain crowd it might be cool, but I've outgrown that. So this is what we want to do. This is a little better. There's my white corner again with the blur effect. I've got some depth blur effect. I've got, uh, you know, good framing, right, at the top. Decent framing. If I just, I'm sitting down. If I gesticulate, you'll see my arms, and it'll come off looking pretty darn professional. And and I spent this much. Okay. Now, let's talk about the lavalier. I'm wearing a lavalier today. There's a reason why I'm wearing a dark shirt because I knew they were going to hand me a black lavalier. Okay, so if you watch people on TV, they typically oftentimes will have dark jackets and things. Most lavaliers are black, okay? So it's not a big deal, but if you wear a black shirt, you hide the lavalier. I mean, is it, am I wrong? Is, does that look a little better? Just at least a little better than that? Even if it's not a big deal, it sort of subliminally, in my opinion, says I took a little bit of extra effort and care to hide my device. All right, scripting. So there are three ways that you can get in front of the camera. This is not on-camera stuff, but I wanted to share this with you. Three ways you can get in front of the camera and deliver your content, okay? One, the best way to do it is improv shoot from the hip because you know your content so well you can just knock it out. Always try that. If you're that confident in your content and you're that confident in front of a camera, do it. One take. Just, just, just loosen it up and yeah, and just improv. If you can, always give it a try. Uh, the other option is a fancy teleprompter, which are expensive. They take a lot of time to set up. You got to fiddle with them, and and at the end of the day, you sort of look like you're eating. Okay, I have one of those. You use a teleprompter. Use a teleprompter for long compositions that have to be perfect. Primarily, I pull out a teleprompter when I'm going to do a sales promo video that's sitting on a, on a sales page. And I have to go through the benefits and the pain points and everything. I have to read through a formula, a sales video. Then I'm going to use a teleprompter. But usually what I do is I, if I'm not going to improv and I'm not doing a, an important sales video, I will do this compromise. And this is called... Um, bullet scripts. Oh, I missed it. Bullet scripts. Well, anyways, it's just your, talk, your talking points on bullets. All right. Maybe that's sort of obvious, but again, if you're a little bit nervous about your content, delivering your content, and you want, you don't want to mess up, you don't want to have to do 12 takes, you don't have a teleprompter, and you don't want to look like you're reading, then do talk points. Bullet how to warm up the voice. Next bullet, uh, you know, um, subglottal phonation threshold pressure. Next bullet, um, dampening the larynx. Next bullet, onsets. This is vocal technique stuff. And then I'm just going to riff on the bullet. I'm going to see the bullet, and then I'm going to improv. Then I'm going to see the bullet, and I'm going to improv. And I'll see the bullet, and I'll improv. So that at least keeps you in good sequence, and it cuts down a lot on the ums and the ahs and the retakes. So it's a hybrid, right? You get, you get some improv in it, but it's got structure. We call that a bullet script. Um, and this is what, this is a real bullet script that, uh, that I created. Um, yeah, 
this is a yeah, this is for uh, online courses. As you can see, it's talking about learning management systems and different stuff. And that is on a little clip in front of me, all right? And that is a bullet script. So it could create a lot of anxiety for some of you to get in front of the camera and then, oh my God, how am I going to remember my parts? How am I going to remember what I'm going to say? Try this sometime. And if we go all the way back here, okay, to the gear. <laughs> Well, back here, this guy right here. That's your bullet script clip, <laughs> okay, for eight bucks. <laughs> the other thing that also works sometimes is a, just a regular paper clip, but tape doesn't work. I've tried it. Tried taping it. It doesn't work. It just it gets it 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 doesn't line up right. Spend eight bucks and get like a little cool clip. So those are my few. Simple tips for making your on-camera presentation decent and less of a headache and less stressful. Any questions? You wrapped up very quickly. Did I? Was that fast? Sometimes you have to use multiple cameras, is it always just a one camera shot? Sometimes I'll use a multiple camera. It's a lot more work, and I'll do a, I'll do a profile shot. Okay, so there's camera number one is in front of me, and then there's a profile shot off to the side, or maybe right about 1 o'clock or 11 o'clock, and it runs, and that's typically my phone, and that's a, that's a backup camera. It's a lot more work to set all that up, so I will do that when I'm doing a self promo. If I'm going to pull out the... Uh, the teleprompter, then I might do two cameras. But most of the time, I don't. 